The closed city residents are afraid of an unknown disease all their lives, but it turns out that the rich people invented it to prevent the poor from believing in themselves and breathing the same air with them. Making her way through the forest, Abigail approaches the wall that separates her town from the rest of the world. But at the last moment, the girl is stopped by her father. After telling his daughter about the constellations, the old man takes her home, away from the dangerous place. Near the house, the family is met by a patrol led by Mr. Garrett, who Abigail considers a friend. Unlike his daughter, Jonathan is not very happy about the encounter. William tells the old man that he has come for him and his department's employees, but as a sign of respect, the head of security gives Jonathan time to say goodbye to the family. Seizing the moment, the professor hides the documents in a stash and gives Abigail the pendant, making her promise never to take it off. Hours later, Abigail is awakened by her mother's screams, and her father is taken away in front of the girl. Several years pass. Already an adult Abigail wakes up to find herself floating above her bed. Quickly returning the pendant to her neck, the girl picks up a note someone threw through the window. Fear reigns in the streets of the city as a speakerphone reports that the epidemic continues to spread and iron-masked patrolmen arrest the infected. Two such groups have a showdown near a ruined building, and Abigail suggests that her rivals settle the dispute, fairly the first one to reach the top of the tower and light the flare is the winner and the losers leave. The girl and her rival start the competition, and the guy proves to be faster, but a patrol appears at the bottom. Despite this, Abigail fulfills the terms of the contract and lights the lantern. An inspector appears behind the girl's back. Abigail manages to push the patrolman away and removes his mask, under which she sees Uncle Roy, a friend of her father's. Escaping home and crawling under the covers, Abigail remembers the last conversation between Jonathan and Roy. She is forced back to reality by her mother, who asks Abigail to go get flour to bake a cake in honor of the town festival. Inspectors immediately notice the intruder, but Roy promises his colleagues to deal with the girl, and having followed her, he enters the house of old friends, where he is knocked out by Margaret. The girl tries to find out the truth from Roy, and to prevent the inspector from deciding to report them to the management, she brings his family into the house, which Roy hides from the government. In the evening, Abigail and her mother come to the square. Having agreed with Roy before, the girl gets out of the crowd and runs to the house of Ethan Blake, the second trader, who deals with the affairs of the infected. On the way, Abigail spots an old acquaintance, Inspector Garrett, who is interrogating a group of young men. Abigail climbs into Blake's house and goes through the personal files of the infected in search of information about her father, but she does not manage to find the necessary documents Ethan returns to the office. Having overheard the conversation, Abigail decides to follow Blake and escapes through the window and hides in the trunk of the car. Another passenger gets into the counselor's car and Blake has to escort him to the infected area. While Abigail watches the guards, a riot breaks out outside Blake's passengers turn out to be a resistance group. The girl becomes a random participant, and when a charge hits her, she falls to the ground and loses her pendant. A strange guy carries Abigail away from the battlefield and someone else's hand takes the pendant. As the stranger carries the girl to safety, she has a dream-like memory of wondering about the wall. But Jonathan has always walked away from these conversations. To distract his daughter, the old man would turn the subject to tales of men with multicolored eyes and an evil king. Waking up in an unfamiliar place, Abigail looks around and just as the girl tries to escape, an amazing sight is revealed before her, a city of magical people with colored eyes from her father's fairy tales. Abigail is approached by a bearded weirdo, Spencer, whose job it is to train new recruits. He takes the stranger to Marcus and the wizards tell Abigail the truth. There is no epidemic the city authorities are trying to destroy people with special gifts. Another guy enters the room, Norman. He gives Marcus a strange object and shows Abigail a trick with a real fairy. The curious girl picks up something resembling a flashlight, and a flash runs down the street, but no one has time to deal with it. The watch reports a patrol, and the city in a second turns into an ordinary neighborhood, populated by beggars. When the inspectors leave, Spencer reports to Leader Bale that the stranger is not an ordinary girl, she has a powerful gift, and he should train her to control her abilities. Bale agrees to hold a couple of classes with the guest, but this does not please the guy's friend Stella. Despite this, the leader invites Abigail to the ring, 
but the girl fails to control the device and Bale refuses to accept her into the group. Abigail remembers her father again, but she has to go to Spencer. The old man shows the apprentice B's objects that control the elements. Remembering how her father hid the documents in the mirror, Abigail hurries home without listening to Bale's orders. Stella is on the girl's side, jealous of her buddy. She demands that he let the new girl go and never let her into the camp again. Once home, Abigail opens her father's stash and finds blueprints and an engine. Abigail confesses to her mother that she knows that her father's pendant suppressed her abilities, but the girl doesn't want to hide anymore, and she's going to free the city from the tyrants. Abigail finds Roy and shows him the blueprints. The inspector tells the girl that it's a blueprint for a prison, and the only way to get there is by flying ship with the help of an engine. Roy promises to help the girl, and she hurries to the resistance camp to tell him about her plans. The girl asks Bal to cancel the rebellion and go behind the wall with her, but the guy orders the stranger to shut up, reminding her that she is the daughter of a criminal who worked for the government. Abigail alone follows Roy into the tunnels, but he betrays his friend's family again, and a patrol comes for the girl. Garrett offers the girl to join them, but when she refuses, the old friend orders the guards to destroy her. The girl is rescued by Bale, but Garrett wounds the guy, and Abigail has to drag him back to the camp. When the leader opens his eyes, an argument ensues between him and the girl, but Abigail fails to convince her buddy to go behind the wall together. A new memory of her father reminds the girl how easy it is to get what she wants if friends work together. Thinking about it, Abigail finds the entrance to the tunnels alone and heads for the flying machine while Bale starts a rebellion in the city. The girl has to return to warn her friends that their plans have been declassified and the inspectors are going after the rebels. Bale fails to get the men away in time and the group has to fight off a patrol. Abigail sees that her friends are dying and to save them, the girl uses the engine. She manages to stop the army, but the device takes all the girl's strength and Marcus carries her away in his arms while Bale signals the city about the beginning of the rebellion. The inspectors arrest the guy, and he learns that they have been betrayed by Stella. The girl has defected to Garrett's side. Having learned about the arrest of the leader, the members of the group destroy all documents and leave the city. Abigail asks her friends not to give up and try to save Bale, and to give people confidence. She opens her father's device and releases the fairy. Hearing the guests' words, they agree to go with her behind the wall. Only Spencer remains in the camp. The old man lures the inspectors to him and blows up the headquarters, giving his life for his friends. The team gets to the flying car, and after freeing Bale, they fly above the city. Abigail releases the fairy again, and the fairy creature leads the ship to the prison located behind the wall. The professor's daughter is afraid to learn that her father also works for the inspectors, but Bale reassures her friend by teaching her how to use her gift and create light directed from the heart. The ship breaks through the invisible shield and approaches the prison floating in the air. Bale plays the role of warden to get inside, but the guards figure out it's a hoax and the rebels have to defend themselves. While the boys take over the guards, Abigail searches the prison in hopes of seeing her father, but he is nowhere to be found. Then the girl looks around and recognizes a device that resembles her pendant. It blocks the power of special people and to free the city and the prisoners. They will have to destroy it. Bale notices the ships approaching and prepares for a serious battle. Meanwhile, Abigail remembers everything her father told her as a child, trying to find clues in the memories. One such memory gives the girl a clue, and she pieces together the details. To do this, Abigail needs three kinds of engines by putting them together. The girl will be able to destroy the machine, but for this, she asks Bale to buy some time. An army of inspectors breaks into the prison to quell a riot. Bale and his friends get into an unequal fight, but Garrett, who has appeared, easily destroys the rebels along with Stella, who was their friend not so long ago. Trying not to pay attention to what is happening, Abigail assembles a device that will save the world, and her father comes to her aid in remembering. He shows his daughter the past to destroy the power of people wanted Garrett and Jonathan had to give his life to run the machine to save his daughter. While Abigail ponders her father's message, Bale fights Garrett in the fire. In front of Stella, the villain is about to finish off the rebel by launching a final crossbow arrow at him. But the traitorous woman covers her lover with herself, saving his life. At that moment, Abigail triggers the device with her gift. A beam bursts out of it and the powers of the special people are unleashed. At the same time, Bale destroys Garrett, who has kept the city in fear for years. 
The blast wave destroys the wall around the city and frees its inhabitants from the spell cast by the tyrant. Climbing out onto the roof, to her friends, Abigail realizes that they saved the world and destroyed the fake epidemic. She reintroduces her father and proudly tells him of her feat, knowing that the old man would be proud of her. In the meantime, Abigail will begin a new history of the town and her personal history with Bale.